Do you know the basics of where you can or cannot fly your drone? Come on, let's go through it. What's good guys, I'm Curtis. Welcome back to the channel and today I want to do a really quick video outlining the new drone regulations that came into play as of the 31st of December 2020. Now I know I'm quite late to the party seeing as it's now February, yeah February, but I thought hey I'll still do a video. I know there's a lot of videos out there at the moment on this but I just wanted to do a quick overview video without going into too much of the nitty gritty detail. So the new rules mean we have specific guidelines on where we can and cannot fly when it comes down to our specific drone model or drone weight. But I'll go into more about that later on. The rules are designed to classify each flight on its risk rather than whether you're flying commercially or as a hobbyist. So there is no longer a requirement for a PFCO to fly commercially as long as you can abide and operate under the new regulations. Today, when it comes to referencing drones, I'll specifically be talking about DJI models. That's what I fly and that's what I feel like a lot of consumers out there fly. I know there are plenty of other models on the market um, from different brands, but like I said, today I'll just be specifically talking about DJI. If you don't fly DJI and you've come across this video, the rules still apply to you, just match the weight to the category sort of thing. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So let's look at the general rules. The first one being maximum flight height. Now we should all know we can't fly any higher than 400 feet or 120 meters. That is in majority of our flights, you you are not allowed to go above that height. Um, there are specific rules when it comes to flying over tall buildings, buildings higher than 105 meters, I think. But with regards to majority of our flights and most of our flights, you, you're not allowed to exceed 400 feet or 120 meters. So the second rule is VLOS or a visual line of sight. Now. When you speak to people, there may or may not be some gray areas on what people think. So I've heard people say that, oh, I can see the area I'm roughly my drone is in, so I'm all right, I can still maintain VLOS. Now, the CAA have stipulated that's not the case. VLOS or visual line of sight means that you should be able to see your drone at all times during the flight, whether it goes behind trees, buildings, you should, you should be able to maintain visual contact with your drone at all times. The third rule is registration. I've heard people refer, refer to it as Demars or Demares, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but if we go with registration. Now the registration is made up of two types. You have the flyer ID and the operator ID. So the flyer ID is for the person doing the flyer. There used to be an age restriction on this where you had to be at least 12 years old, but since January 29th of this year, 2021, they've now removed that and now there is no age restriction at all. All drones above 250 grams need a flyer ID. So the flyer ID is completely free from the CAA and it lasts for five years. You need to complete an online course, which roughly takes, I don't know, half hour, hour to go through. Then you need to complete a online exam or quiz, which is a 40 question multiple choice exam. And the pass mark is 30. You need 30 questions to, to pass. The operator ID is for the drone and the legal owner of the drone. Now you need to be at least 18 years old to have an operator ID. So. You can be 12, 10, 9, 8 flying with a flyer ID, but the drone needs to be registered to someone above the age of 18. It costs £9 and that lasts for a year. And that ID needs to be attached or labelled onto the drone at all times. You see a lot of people sticking it down with tape or drawing it on with markers. Um, however you want to do it, that operator ID needs to be visible and on the drone at all times. All drones that are not a toy but have a camera require an operator ID. So if we go back to the Mini and the Mini 2, it didn't need a flyer ID, but it does need an operator ID. Whereas the flyer ID is free and the operator ID costs £9. So if you do own a Mini or a Mini 2, you will still need an operator ID at the cost of £9. I always say you might as well do the flyer ID even though it's not needed, you may as well get one anyway. It's free and it does give you a lot of knowledge by doing the short exam, it's a win-win. I would recommend if you need the opera ID but not the flyer ID, you might as well do it anyway. The new rules are split into three categories. Now the first one is open, then specific, then certified. Open is deemed as less risk and can be flown by anybody. Specific, slightly more risk and you need some permissions from the CAA to be able to fly in those conditions and certified are deemed the most dangerous flights. So I don't even think the CAA have got really regulations on how they're going to 
allow those sort of flights so i think they're still trying to debate that and figure that out they may have done it by now if they have put a comment in the section below and let me know because i'm still learning as well but today i'm only going to talk about the open category because that is what 99 percent of us will be flying in whether you're a hobbyist even if you're doing commercial work you'll still be flying in that said open category majority of the time so within the open category you have three sub categories i know there's a lot of categories but yeah so you have the open category and then within that you've got three sub categories is a1 a2 and a3 now they translate into a1 flying over people essentially a2 flying near to people and then a3 flying far away or really far from people so in a1 basically you can fly over people but not crowds or assemblies of people now this year do you give a description on what they class as a crowd or an assembly of people essentially is people meeting up for th the same thing so beaches class as a crowd football grounds class the crowd if it's full etc so you sort of get the gist there a2 is close to people and essentially you cannot fly over uninvolved people but can fly within a 30 or 50 meter horizontal distance of uninvolved people um uh, the distance is gauged on your drone's weight and whether or not you have completed a A2 COFC qualification if you're interested in the A2 COFC I've linked another video which I've done regarding all that I've passed my test so check that out if you're interested a3 far away from people now this is the most restrictive and where most of our drones or the DJI drones fall into you cannot fly over uninvolved people and must maintain a 50 meter horizontal distance from uninvolved people and you cannot fly within 150 meters 150 meter horizontal distance from any residential commercial industrial or recreational areas now that list is massive. I will put that list here and I will also link it in the description below. So check that out. So when flying A3, it is really is quite restrictive. You are literally restricted to flying in open fields. Now, where you fall within those three categories, A1, 2 and 3, depends on the type of drone or the class of drone. There are five classes from C0 to C4 and where your drone sits in those classes depends on its weight or the maximum takeoff mass you might have heard being referred to quite a bit. Because all the drones on the current market were released pre these rules, there are no drones that fall into any of those classes. All the drones on the market currently are classed as legacy drones. Now we'll go more into that in, in a second, but yeah, you need to remember that all the drones now, so your Mavic Pro, your Mavic Pro 2, your Minis, your Airs, your Sparks, they're all classed as legacy drones. So like I said, all current drones on the market are classed as legacy drones. And where you now fall in the A1, 2, 3 categories depends on your drone weight. But there is a transitional period from now, or December 31st, 2020 to December 31st, 2022, I believe. So let's go into a breakdown of where your drone might fall into the A123 categories. Now, like I said at the start of this video, I'm going to be talking solely about DJI models because that's what I fly and that's what people I know fly, but there are plenty of other brands on the market. So if you are flying a, another branded drone, you will fall into these you will fall into these categories depending on the weight of your drone. So place yourself in a category depending on the weight of the drone you fly. So if we start with the heaviest type of category, from 2 to 25 kilos so we're talking the inspire or your inspire 2 these are automatically placed into the a3 category fly far away from people so let's move on to the next weight class you have 500 grams up to two kilos so this is your mavic air 2 your mavic pro your mavic 2 pro and zoom your dji phantom so you will be flying in the a3 category unless you complete the a2 cofc which will then allow you to fly in the A2 category. So I touched on the A2 COFC earlier. I have got another video on that. So if you do want to check that out, it will give more detail on what that course is like. Please do go ahead and check that out. But yeah, you're flying A3 unless you do the A2 COFC, which is a competency course, um, which would then basically allow you to then fly in the A2 category. Now, 250 grams to 500 grams, that's, so that's your Mavic Air 1 your, or your Spark. You're flying in the A3 category unless you complete the A2 COFC again. But by completing the A2 COFC, so you can then fly in the A1 transitional close but not over people. Um, essentially, that means your horizontal distances become smaller, but you still can't fly over uninvolved people. So now this is where it gets real fun. So below 250 grams, so this is your Mini or your Mini 2, 
you fly in the A1 category with no need for an A2 COFC at all. And you're able to fly in that category so you can fly over people um, in residential, recreational, commercial and industrial areas with no issues at all. So if you're in the drone for a market, everything's pointing at the, the Mini or the Mini 2 at the moment, purely for the fact of how these rules are going. It would be key to touch on that all drones bar the Mini after December 31st, 2022, so after December 31st, 2022, will be relegated to the A3, regardless of extra training or not. So we really do have a two year transitional period before, so we really do have a two year transitional period before, regardless of whether you've done an A2 COFC or not, after December 31st, 2022, we're all going to be flying in the A3 category unless we go out and, by the looks of it at the moment, unless we go out and spend money and buy uh, what we will hope to have been released by then, a new classified drone. We may start to see the likes of a Mavic 2 Pro being sold with a new, with a new classification. So you may have the exact same specification of drone, Mavic 2 Pro or, uh, or a Mavic Air 2, which you bought pre these rules, but in a year's time they might start selling those drones with the new classification c0 to c4 therefore enabling you to fly in either a one two or three categories after december 31st 2022 but because you bought the drone pre these rules you can only fly in a3 category which is which is really poor it really sucks at the moment in my opinion um we just have to see if they decide to ease or change those rules at all with between now and december 31st 2022 so yeah so i've still got these up on the screen um if you're flying any of those drones that's where you currently sit obviously if you complete the a2 cofc it then allows you to fly in a, a better category being the a2 but realistically if you've come across this video to try and learn some rules before you actually purchase a drone if you're looking to purchase a drone at the moment and this is obviously february 2021 i would be looking at the mini or the mini 2 realistically because that's the new version of the mini um be because at the moment even after december 31st 2022 that is the only drone that be able to fly in the a1 category and give you the most freedom when it comes to flying as the year progresses into 2022 we may start to see a new model of dji released onto the market with a new c0 or c4 classification which will then be able to gauge whether or not those drones are right for us but at the moment all the drones on the market and still up for sale are still classed as legacy drones and apart from the mini and the mini 2 on this come december 31st will be relegated to a3 so which is realistically no fun for flying at all if i'm being perfectly honest so yeah that's the basic overview on the rules and in the description i'll include all the recreational industrial commercial and residential areas so you have that for reference long story short if you're desperate to buy a dji drone at the moment and you don't want to wait i'd be looking at getting a mini 2 to be perfectly honest because that will best suit you over the longer period of time hopefully they might change it but at the moment it looks like if you were to buy an air 2 mavic 2 pro right now in the on the market as it stands right now on february the 24th 2021 after when when we get to 2023 that drone will only be able to be flown in a3 category now that might be suitable for you but for someone like me that just doesn't suit but yeah i really hope the video is informative and it gave you a brief overview of the rules and you can sort of go away with a little bit of understanding if you did please i'd really appreciate hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video